All right, guys, for this next video, we're going to look at the big rim modified. So it is uh, taking our original big rim, and we're just making a couple slight adjustments to it, just like you would um, in the, your normal workplace. You're always going to have revisions to your parts. <coughs> so being able to actually pull up a drawing and be able to make some edits to it is an, an incredibly important skill. Um, for this one, we're just simply going to add some spokes to this rim. Um, and then we're going to change our original length values. So you can see we're keeping our material at 1060 alloy just like it was aluminum. Uh, but now we're going, uh, A and B is going to be 120 and 1000. So to do this drawing, this is actually a, a very quick and simple drawing. This one is one that should take you a couple minutes at most if you have it down. Uh, first couple times it may take you a little bit longer, but once you get proficient with this one, this should take you literally just a couple seconds to modify. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up our original big rim. And there we go. So we have our original big rim. It's in 1060 alloy. I have my mass properties. That's looking pretty good. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and draw on these spokes. So I'm going to go to this front face, sketch, and to draw a spoke in here, we need to align it along these curves. So we're trying to create this spoke inside this blue area. So I know I have this curved surface and this curved surface to deal with. So I'm going to take two circles and attach them to both. There we go. There we go. Um, one of the things I want to do with those circles, though, is make sure they stay attached. Because right now I could grab it and move it around. Okay, so I want to make sure they stay attached. So what I'm going to do is a control click. I'm going to select my inside circle, control click to this circle here, and say co-radial. Um, just like we're doing with angles earlier with like the channel slot where you did a collinear, co-radial will attach it there. And no matter if this gets bigger, that circle will expand with it. So that, that makes sure if we do change any values like our, our size that we're getting ready to change, that it will change with it. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing to the top one here. Um, I usually grab them and move them in just a little bit so I can vis visibly see this happening. Um, you don't have to. That's up to you on that one. So I'm going to select this one. Control, select that inside circle. Oop, click too much. Let's try it again. Control, click that. And then co-radial. It's looking pretty good. And now we're going to draw, draw two lines. So we got our, our circles here. So we drew a circle around this one, drew a circle around this one. Now you can see a vertical line here and a diagonal line that is 20 degrees apart. So I'm going to do the vertical. And I'm going to go from the origin itself. And then I'm going to go up here. Make sure it attaches on there. I'm going to set my dimension. So I'm going to go from here to here. 20 degrees. This is a really important step that you do this from an apex or a, a center point here. Um, if I were to trim this first, so if I took these two lines off and I tried to put a dimension of 20 degrees from here to here, it would simply push this line out instead of rotating it based on this um, focal point or the center point. So now what I can do is I go ahead and trim these out. I'm going to trim that line, that line there. I'm left with my drawing here or my, my cutout I'm wanting to do. I need, do need to put fillets on there. So you can see it's got a 10, 10, 10, and then just to throw you for a loop, one of them that's 20. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do fillet, set to 10, so I'm going to go that one, that one, and that one. Check mark, change this to 20. Select this one up here, you can see it's a little bit bigger, that's good. Check mark. And now we're simply going to cut this out. Make sure you cut. We want to make sure it's going through all. Check mark. That looks pretty good. Now we got to do our revolve. So we're going to do a circular pattern. And again, this is a feature now. So we're going to do a circular pattern on the feature menu. We want it to go around this guy right here. Now you can do the inside circle as long as it's going around in a 360 degree pattern. It doesn't really matter which one of these circles you select on. Um, we do want it 360 degrees. Do we have 12 of them? Let's count. Whoop. 
So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep, 12 of them. So 12 is good. And then what are we making a copy of? That right there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, you'll see on there it says make sure there's equal spacing. And that's a simple thing to do. Just make sure equal spacing is on. Check mark. That's looking pretty good right there. So the last thing we're going to do, because right now if I go to evaluate mass properties, this is not going to be my final mass property because I did not change my equations. So again, manage equations. Right now you can see A is 100 and then B is 900 just like it was on my original drawing. I need to change this. I want A to now be 120 and I wanted B to be 1000. There we go, and you can see A, or sorry, this sketch right here, the A plus 40 automatically changed because now it's adding from A. There we go. It's going to make this whole thing bigger. Evaluate your mass properties, put in your answer, and let's see how you do on this one.